Sorry well, about your baby. When I put together that crib for the first time, I was absolutely... You want to talk about... You don't give a crap if you're done with an Ikea piece of furniture and you have an extra part. Because it's not going to kill you. But when you... It's not going to kill but, anyone. But, but you put this crib together... Typically before the baby is in this yes. world and you don't know what to expect, you're nervous, it's crazy, you've, you've taken all your cool crap and you had to throw it away or box it up because now this kid occupies the space. But yeah, the space that used to be kind of cool. Yeah, with your records. Is it as nerve-wracking as putting like, the bolts in to hang your TV? You know it's similar because yeah. you don't know if it's going to fall. Right? You don't want TV, that to fall. It's not alive. Yeah, but you don't want to get no, in the crib. It's either. important. It, yes, it is. Like, how does this railing come down on the side? All these different things. There's latches. There's all this stuff. Well, so it, I don't know if it's this a little is bit more true. complicated. So, but I, I do believe there's one thing to be true about that. You're right. It's one of the more nerve wracking. Uh, I thought do it, it yourself construction projects, right? But I realized I just didn't want to mess it up. In the moment that I'm putting this crib together, right? Because you know, if you have a second kid, you're like, whatever, figure it out, man. But in the first one, you're putting this together, and I started thinking, all right. So every once in a while, there's a crib recall, right? Because this defective thing, yeah. or is it that the crib's defective, or is it the fact that some other idiot who has no business constructing something that you're actively trying to keep alive shouldn't be doing, it? like me? Because now that's what I'm questioning, like. Are they going to recall this crib? Because, like, I looked at Consumer Reports, right? It's the, I think the first time in my life that I actually reviewed something on Consumer Reports was this kind of stuff, I think, right? You know what, man? But I'm like, are they going to, if I put this together wrong, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm not doing this right, because I had questions as I'm going through, are they going to, because if they recall the crib, it's not the crib's uh, fault. Uh, 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 Robin, I took my Instant Pot out of the box the other night. It's it's pretty well ready to go. There's a couple things I need to you look at. Thinking about using yours, yeah, too? I'm thinking about it. I have to read a booklet. I have to see what's, what the recipes are. It won't take you long, there's I a couple, promise. There's a couple things that are stuffed inside of yeah, it. Yeah, I'll just do it already. But I really <laughs> truly believe as far as a consumer product that really has a, a significant level of importance, the idea that a crib that they're asking the general population to, to put, make, right. put this thing, this is the most complicated thing the general public <laughs> has to put together that they pay for. It's like, it's like here's the parts to the car. Put it together. I hope it doesn't crash and you die because you didn't put the brakes together right. Mercedes. Together. Yeah, I'm mean, right. dead serious. Like it's just like. But well, people put brakes on their car all the time. They do, but they know what the hell they're doing. You know what I mean? Like with a crib. I think it's you, fine. Just, you because, you, just baby. because you had sex I doesn't mean you have to. You can you make a baby by accident. Right. Put together Half a crib. Half of the Earth's like, population you spread this, with you, somebody not you, knowing. You spread this with these instructions out. It's like the size of a poster. And there's like 24 different things. You're like, oh, God. Like it's. I don't know. Like but most, if when you, you miss buy a stuff, screw on this, your you're kid screwed. might die. Yeah, when you, I yeah. mean that's the difference. I'm yeah. putting together a and dresser. Things, this screw, I don't care. It's a dresser. I don't even care. The, when you buy a bed, like an adult buys a bed, you know what they do? They come to your house. <laughs> they put it together. They take the old mattress away. They put the bed together. And then they're gone. Then you're like, oh, look, I got a new bed. For my big grown right. ass. It's not nearly <laughs> as, as hard With as nothing putting to together. choke right. on. Exactly. Nothing to get my it's head not, stuck in. I'm not important. <laughs> right. you know what I mean, like, but this unborn child is. Do it yourself, man. Right. Hey, man, everybody, I don't care how <laughs> freaking dumb you are. You could be a doctor, man, or you could just be someone who just can't get it. You got struck matter. by lightning. It's the same crib. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, God. Yeah. Speaking of that, two girls who are 10 and 11, 10 and 11, have been charged as juveniles in connection with threats made against another girl in Prince William County. Police in Northern Virginia said oh, the two oh, girls oh, oh, oh. communicated by text to conspire to kill the victim. Prince William is not that part of Virginia. No, I know. No, I know. <laughs> She's 11 years old. The 10-year-old and 11-year-old used cryptic language, encouraged each other to delete the text message after the threats were read. Police responded to the girls' school after a concerned parent alerted school staff that she really thought that these two girls were going to kill this girl. In a statement, police said after extensive consultation with the Commonwealth Attorney, the Commonwealth Attorney, <laughs> Rufus B., the girls were charged with conspiracy to commit a felony. Uh, threats were yeah. not carried out and no one was harmed, but yeah, details of the alleged threat were not disclosed, nor was the name of the school the girls attended. Our question, why are you lucky to still be alive? 844-999-OLA. Do you tell your daughter, hey man, do you know uh, Sheila and uh, Lips over there, they were going to try to kill you? Like, you bring this up to them like, why do you think these kids want to kill you? That, uh, just too young. It's a weird conversation to have. Hey, come here, how was school? All right, what you do at recess? Did you know those two girls were trying to murder you? Hmm. I mean, I think it... Honestly, I hate to say this, but it's only because my brother teaches in that area. Yeah. There's a lot of gangs. Okay. Like I, oh, so you think it probably rolls that way. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, if I had to guess, I mean, that's his big issue at his middle school, right? If he kicks a kid out, the kid joins a gang. So he, so what I'm guessing is... Do they hold that as leverage? You can kick me out, man, well, but I'm joining the gang. They don't hold it as leverage, but it's just terrible. Like, him and the other administrators feel bad, but there's a certain level, right? A kid. So I'm thinking these 10 and 11-year-old girls may be already kind of close to crime. I, uh, I feel that's it. Okay. Yeah. No, no, like, you're right. 11, that you makes would, a lot more sense. Normally, kids, if you were mad at somebody, you'd pick, like, kids would pick them or, right, or beat them up or something. Like, these kids went as far to play in a murder. Uh, I was yeah. watching... It's uh, kind of jumping ahead. One of those Dateline shows, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm watching. Are they the, all just Dateline? Well, I'm watching the footage on this one. I'm like, <laughs> do you like? Uh, do you watch Dateline all the time? No, this was a few years. But it's ago. always on. But this was a few years no, ago. No, I know. It was. It was a 48 hours. Whatever the hell it was. It just was, call it, was, it Dateline. It, whatever it was, it was Dateline. Just you know what I mean? Dateline, whatever it was, six, it was, Dateline. If it doesn't go, t- 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 so it's I'm watching dateline. this thing and I'm like, man, that looks awful familiar. That looks, goddamn, that looks like my high school. Well, it turns out it was my high school. And the story was about these two like juniors or whatever who took one of their kids out, of friends, and killed her in the woods. Why? Oh my God, no reason. No, absolutely no reason. But they just wanted to see what it was like? They just or? wanted to kill this kid. I was like, my God. I'm like, what kind of idiots would do that? Oh, my God. You <laughs> well, know what I mean? Oh, my God. They went to university high school. Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was like, thanks. thanks Don't you ma- have your uh, reunion coming up? Yeah, thanks for making my people look nice. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, oh, we're pleasant. We'll take our shirt off our back and the pants and stab you and kill you. <laughs> In the woods. <laughs> exactly. Leave your body there. It's Why? sadly for West Virginia. I don't think anybody's going to think of it as a violent place. No. I mean, typically. Yeah, that's not, not the way we that's leave not with the, that. That's right. not the way the jokes go. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Why are you lucky to still be alive? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Ace. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. What's going on, guys? How are you, Ace? You tell us, Ace. Ace, you tell us, man. What the hell's going bad, on? Man. Okay. So, uh, when I was younger, I was probably like 16 or 17 years old, my buddies and I, we used to go on uh, bike rides, and uh, we lived in this town, Ording, or used to live in Ording, and we'd head towards like Tuala up in Tacoma area, and one day we decided we were going to head towards Bonnie Lake, and went through uh, South Prairie, and there's this, this big windy hill that comes down from Bonnie Lake, and uh, on our way back, we decided it'd be smart to ride side by side in the road instead of going one after another, and... Uh, I never rode the bike before and I started gaining speed on my buddy and, uh, I go to hit my brakes and I almost go faster. And, uh, my front peg locks into his back wheel and I start tumbling and rolling. And this is like a super, super busy road. And, uh, the only thing that saved me was that they were doing road work down at the end of the road, like maybe a half a mile from where I crashed. And, uh, Probably 10 minutes later, after I picked myself up, the bike was destroyed. I could barely walk. We get down to where the road work was actually at, and uh, I hear a guy on a motorcycle come flying. He comes around the corner and piles into the back of a car, falls into the oncoming lane, and gets ran over. Oh, oh damn. Geez. Wow, that took a turn. Really did. did. coming, man. Right. Wow, Ace. Okay. Yeah, man. It, it was it was pretty hardcore. It was definitely uh, <laughs> yeah. life-turning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, 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 I like Ace. The aristocrats. I couldn't stop hearing and uh, I just I just could not stop hearing him say that. But that really, man, I got locked into it. But anyway, and uh, yeah, and uh, but well, it was his it was his uh, like segue to his next thought. So whatever he finished the sentence, I mean, and uh, and I realized he was doing it, and then. I could not hear him do it, man. And I'm be honest with you, I don't think. And the next thing you know, dead body. I'm losing right, and then out of nowhere, it's like the guy gets run over. I'm like, thank God, that's what happened. Why are you lucky to still be alive? Eight four four nine 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 Ola. That's why you shouldn't ride bikes, kids. Mm hmm. <laughs> dangerous for others. You see other people die. Hello, Doug. Welcome to the men's room. How you doing? Hola. What's up, Doug? Hola. So why are you lucky to be alive, Doug? Well, what happened to me, I was working in uh, Gig Harbor, and anyways, I'm a marine technician where I work on boats, and I was on the top of a 60-foot yacht, and we were putting the little dinghy back on the top, and while I was up there, the line broke, I fell about 25 feet, 30 feet from the top of the yacht, bounced off the concrete pier into Gig Harbor... And luckily, my boss was coming back around, and he saw me drifting out to the channel and <laughs> got me back in. I mean, you're just full. Are you conscious? Are, are you, you face down, out? like out of it? Y- 
yeah, and see, that's the thing. I don't remember any of it. Well, and sure. so they, resuscit- they resuscitated me for, they had approximate about an hour and a half. I had eight brain bleeds, broke every bone in my face, almost lost my left eye, got MRSA infection in the hospital, Damn. amputated my middle finger. Oh, oh no. Which one? Which hand? On my left. All right, so you can still flip people off. Well, it's, it's a half nub, so not really. Okay. So it's just yeah, the F bar. It doesn't have the strongest, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. No, there's just no U on the end. <laughs> it's just the F. <laughs> exactly. So I, I, I survived that, and now just dealing with uh, traumatic brain injuries with uh, with uh, an L and I's denying all that. They say it was a mild accident. A mild, a mild accident. accident. What, so what kind I of, can hear there's something wrong with it. What, what, what goes on with you that that, uh, that, that reoccur- that's reoccurring? It, it, it's mostly the, the worst part of it is being in the field I was in. I was in the Coast Guard for a long time. And, and so it, it's short-term memory and just the things that I just came automatic naturally. Like now I've got to put things certain places, take pictures of my car where I park. It's wow. you know I'm not totally dysfunctional, but it's it's it, it's tough All right, to get well, adjusted you, you, to. You, you you park someplace. Do you even know why you're going into the store sometimes? <laughs> that that I'm good with. All right. Okay. All right. Well, no, that's the important right. part. As long man, as like, you know why you're yeah. there. All right. Maybe so, you can't remember your car, but you can remember why why so you're. What about what about your face and your vision? So you said you broke every bone in your face. I'm a mat reconstructive surgery. How much different do you look, or how how much the same do you look? Uh, oh, you know when I it's like the whole month I was in the hospital, about a month. I don't remember any of it, but my now wife says that um, the first thing I said is, "Do I still have my looks?" And I, and I do. No, nothing. Whenever when when I get asked about that, they're like, "Wow, you look compl- so nothing." I, that nothing had to be done. I guess I was lo- I I am lucky in that sense. Well, I mean, it depends so on your perspective. You're what you're telling me with, is, yeah, you were so ugly before the accident. You look like you'd already broken every bone in your face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. Correct. <laughs> Finally came in handy. Exactly. And then what about your your vision in your left eye? Is that all the way back, or is that different? It, it, it's 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 all you know that. Everything's fine. I mean, except for my memory and stuff like that, everything is uh, normal. So I am, I am beyond blessed. Yeah, and we're we're, uh, I, we're we're glad. I mean, sort of, bro. You fell off uh, of a boat and hit your face on cement. We're glad you didn't drift out to sea. Yeah, it, right. You were drifted onto a channel. I mean, that blessing started late, bro. Beyond the memory, though, everything's fine. Yeah. yeah. Why are you lucky to still be alive? Eight four four nine nine nine. Ola, more your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Back to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. A 91-year-old guy named Johnny Douglas was in a McDonald's drive through in Richmond, Indiana on Monday, and the guy in front of him was taking too long. Uh, Richmond, by the way, is on the Ohio border. That's about 70 miles east of Indianapolis. So Johnny responded by pulling out a gun and firing a warning shot at him. The guy in front of him was 39-year-old Philip Bailey. Philip Bailey. <laughs> And apparently fire there Philip was Bailey? some drama leading yeah, up George's to George's brother. About Philip being an easy lover. Johnny yelled at him to get a move on. Then Philip yelled back and ended up throwing a drink. So that's when Johnny pulled the gun. But luckily the bullet didn't hit anyone. Police showed up and arrested Johnny for criminal recklessness and pointing a loaded firearm at another person. And Philip is also facing charges for intimidation, disorderly conduct, and a lot more. So, Good time. Yes, exactly. Good time. After the love is gone. Why are you lucky to still be alive? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Dan. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, this is Dan. I actually am lucky to be alive because I had cardiac arrest when I was 13. You had a heart attack when you were 13? Exactly. You had a heart uh, defect that was never diagnosed? Yeah. Up until I had my cardiac arrest, nobody even, I, I had, nobody even knew that I had a heart condition. Yeah, I was going to say, but I wouldn't even say cardiac arrest. I think it's cooler if you're like 13, like, dude, I had a heart attack. Right. You cardiac know, arrest is like the, the yeah. watered down version right. of the same, right. the same thing. But yeah. you're th- where were you? Were you in school? Were you home? How did you know you were having a heart attack? Actually, I was in a bowling alley with my family. Okay. And what, chest pain, sweat, hard to breathe? Yeah, and then I I, I, I uh, passed out. I fell down and I passed out, and I was in a coma at Children's Hospital for over a month. 
Okay. Wow, man. And you don't, I'm sure you don't remember being asleep. You just remember what, waking up and there's people looking at yeah, you? Yeah, I just, exactly. I remember, I just remember waking up and the doctor's all around me. What, uh, what did they find out that you had? Um, a mitral valve. A micro valve. Okay. Mitro. Mitro. Mitro valve. Yeah. And that means what exactly to those of us that don't have a mitral valve? If you don't know what a mitral it's it's basically a infected heart infected part of the heart. Ah, okay. All right. And so, I've had like these things called ablations where they go into the heart and try to um target the infected parts of the heart. And I've had five of those. All right. How old are you now? I'm thirty seven. Okay. And I'm so uh, glad you didn't say fourteen. Do you do you do you feel healthy? <laughs> I feel healthy now. All right. What's and your, what, are, what are the things that change most? So when you wake up, you find out that you, you had this condition, and I know you've done the surgeries, but as far as your diet or exercise or any of that, what are things that maybe you missed out on that, that other kids at least got to do? Probably partying. You say you haven't been able to drink? Uh, yeah. Okay. How about smoking weed? Um, I don't do that. All right. All right. How many times have they broken your chest plate to go in there instead of going under your arm and going through your groin? Chest plate. They don't do the. They don't break the chest plate. They do these things called ablations. Okay. It's kind of complicated though. They ever come up? They ever come up through your Jimmy? They ever come up through your boys? No, no. Because I know they can get. I know they can get up there through there too. They can go through the bottom. What do they not like you? They can go through the bottom. They go underneath the arm. Like my daughter had heart surgery underneath the arm. What dictates? It was. It was through the. It was through the. Through the back. They. They. These things called there's this thing called leads that are in my that connect the defibrillator to my heart, and they go they they have to replace everything every four years. So oh, basically, I have to have new leads and new defibrillator every four years. So basically, like the battery dying on your unit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What? So you have a defibrillator in there? You hear it ever go like, zzz, 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 and they realize like you're getting shocked back to life while you're at like Red Lobster. I mean, do you ever have that feeling <laughs> like you know, you're just sitting no? There? I was I was uh, I was at the bar once and I I passed out and had and my defibrillator fired and I got shocked and that woke you back Very up. Painful. What's that? And that woke you back up. It did. Yeah. It is it like did. getting tasered I mean, like, from the inside? A, I mean, like, like how wake, bad you said is it? It hurt pain. a lot. I mean, yeah. you wake up like ow. I, it's kind of hard to. I I woke up and I felt fine, did, I, but it I, hurt so bad. It hurt after right. the fact. What it, what it is like? Really the, what do people in the bar think? They don't really care that much, depending on who they are. It's a local, local alarming. It's a local yeah. neighborhood bar. No one, no one, no one notices yeah, that you had a hard a hard yeah, episode friends, there. One of my friends carried me to the hospital, so. I walked, I walked in, walked in uh, he carried me to his car, and we went, we went to the hospital. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah, his name was Tyler. When was your last episode? My last episode was about a year ago. Okay, and were you at home? Nope. That's when I was at Nikki's at the bar. All right, Nikki's. Ah, okay, so that was the one. <laughs> man, oh, man. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm you, I go to the bar with friends all the time. I go everywhere with friends. That's true, man. But it seems like if it happens, he's never home. You know what, man? Uh, Better to be out and uh, freak other people. When you're at home, no one else can be freaked out by your annex. Also, there's just no one else around. Yeah, so when you do it, at least in a public place, and everybody can feel bad. That helps. Yeah, it does. (laughs) I mean, like, (laughs) you can disturb more people than nobody. At least you have an audience. Our question, why are you lucky to still be alive? 844-999-OLA. The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.